Good evening and welcome to the town board meeting. It is January 8th, 2013. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us tonight. We're coming back after holidays and um, a very um, pensive time in many ways, I think, this year. The holidays were marred for all of us. And I think the children that were lost in Newtown, Connecticut, hurt us in ways that we didn't expect. I didn't expect to feel it so deeply. And I hope that you will understand when I tell you that as a town supervisor, I intend to work with other supervisors and mayors in Dutchess County, starting with a, with a meeting that's going to take place in February when we first get together as supervisors and mayors, to really dive into the issue of how can this happen to a small community like Red Hook? And what can we do? What can we say about it? How can we go on record about it and encourage politicians to not just talk about it, but to come up with something that makes a difference? Um, I can't speak for the rest of this board, but I can speak for myself. I've been comfortable with guns in our house as a child and as an adult, um, with sportsmen throughout my life, and I certainly understand the Second Amendment. But I also understand that automatic weapons on the market for anyone cannot end up in a good thing. I, I, I just feel that, that we have to draw a line with that. And so if we could encourage politicians that make decisions to say enough of that, at least a decision will be made that has brought us to some satisfaction that maybe we can prevent this kind of thing from happening again. So, um, I hope that your holidays were good and restful and that we can start off the new year with good work. We have a full agenda tonight. And it's uh, our night to do reorganization. And so that will happen toward the end of the evening because we have some other business to do. I will be putting off the town supervisor's report, which is typically the first uh, meeting that we have every month. But because we're closing the books this year and Debbie is, is really pulling together a lot of information and paying a lot of bills, we thought we would wait and give you the, f the final financial report, if not at the next <coughs> meeting, the following. I have been asked every year to announce from the Association of Towns the fact that they will be hosting yet again uh, the, the uh, annual training school and annual meeting of the association at the Hilton New York Towers in New York City, February 17th to 20th, 2013. It's a training session for town officials. Unhappily, we have had to cut this expenditure from the budget for the last several years. It was a wonderful training session. I still think it's a wonderful training session, but it is an expense that the board has felt that we have to uh, manage, at least for the time being, and we hope that we can um, once again in the very near future and enjoy those meetings and the trainings are wonderful. <coughs> I did need to make this announcement, and so, again, it is um, beginning at 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, February 17th, at the New York Hilton. And this year, there is a change in the agenda for the justice and court clerks, where classes this year will be held at the Hilton in New York. There is a general opening session, then. We probably should designate someone to be 
our delegate in case one of us is willing and able to go on the Wednesday morning to vote on some of the issues. And I will share with you all of these articles. And um, I'm hoping that one of us can go. I would be willing to be the delegate depending on the weather. I'm a little bit um, nervous about uh, high snow, get, get, having gotten caught down there one time in, in terrible snow. And um, so I would be willing to do it, go down on the Wednesday morning maybe and, and <coughs> attend that meeting. It's a 10 a.m. meeting, so it would be an early start. And I was hoping one of you <coughs> would volunteer to be an alternate if I cannot do that. Is there anyone willing and able to do that? I do it. Okay, great. Thank you, Harry. So I, I move that, that um, I would be nominated as the delegate and Harry the alternate for this uh, annual meeting on Wednesday the 20th. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'm sure you've noticed that um, <coughs> Councilman Ross is not with us tonight. Um, and we will be hearing from him about an issue that he took responsibility for, and that is the Echo Valley Lighting District, which he last time we met said that he would um, do an analysis of the old maps and the new maps and the information that we have from Central Hudson, and he would make a recommendation to the board, and he told me uh, on the phone that he would definitely do that and he would try to get it done by the first meeting in February, the second Tuesday in February. So we're going to hold him to it. Um, Dutchess County it has announced, our, our, um, our county executive has announced that there will be a, a major um, opportunity for municipalities in Dutchess County to apply for funding that is available through the county for shared services plans. And applications for these plans will be available to municipalities in mid-January within the next few weeks. And they're looking for uh, solid applications that show attempts on the part of municipalities <laughs> to cooperate together with the objective of saving money and um, providing efficiencies in local governments. I've been meeting with the two mayors, Mayor Ed Blundell and Mayor Brian Crana, and intend to continue doing that. And I really feel committed to pushing for shared services among us. We've been successful. Teresa has helped us lead the, lead the way in sharing a space, a highway garage in 2012 that now houses both the town and the village highway department. And um, that is a, just the beginning. We have other shared services going on, but we believe there are, more, there are many more things we can do and should do. And I just wanted to say that I am committed to pushing forward with that in the year ahead. <coughs> um, sadly, Dutchess County had fewer funds for community development block grant uh, applications that had been submitted by all of us. I think there was almost every municipality in Dutchess County submitted a request for funding. And the, t the county has received $2.1 million in requests for what amounted to available funds of only $880,000. Red Hook was not one that received the funding request that we had submitted. Um, the committee on which I serve and chair did our very best to evaluate fairly all of the um, applications and um, there were strict criteria and weighted judgments about it and I think the committee did a good job, the staff did a good job. I just regret that there isn't more money there and I'm afraid to say that there won't be more money there from the federal government to the county 
to the local municipalities. So we are going to have to find ways that we can um, make up for these critical projects that we have in the past turn to community development block grant like sidewalks and improvements in our infrastructure. And all of us are going to have to be creative and find ways to do those things because the money is just not what it used to be. It's probably less than half of what it used to be. In, in my experience, and that's 10 years on that, on that uh, uh, committee. So, um, I have a resolution that we all have signed for a woman who, it doesn't seem possible, is retiring because she's so young and beautiful, but she is retiring from the New York State Police Department, who is a local Red Hook resident, and I would like to honor her by saying that Lisa Loughran has served for 20 years in the New York uh, law enforcement as an officer with unfailing dedication to the principles of the New York State Police. And so here are the whereases. Whereas Captain Loughran is well known for her honesty, dedication, fairness, and professional demeanor. Her achievements through her career include promotions from investigator to sergeant, sergeant station commander, zone sergeant, lieutenant, and captain. And whereas Lisa is known and commended for her, her intelligence, her compassion, <coughs> and her willingness to help others, Whereas Captain Loughran, through an outstanding performance, has received recognition from the highest level of law enforcement. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, Sue T. Crane, supervisor of the town of Red Hook, together with the town board and on behalf of our residents, do hereby honor and pay tribute to Captain Lisa D. Loughran. We wish her and her family great pleasure and many happy years of retirement. And it's stated and signed by each of us this day, January 8th, 2013. We're very, very proud. She's a member of our community, a Boy Scout leader, and a wonderful, wonderful resident. Um, I would hope that someone, one of us, could attend her retirement party. If not, we'll, are you going? That would be wonderful, Paul. If you would deliver this for us, I'll make sure you get it. Thank you. In fact, shall I give it to you now? Thank you, Paul. Thank you for vote on that resolution or just and uh, yes, I would like to vote on that. <coughs> May I um, hear a motion to that effect? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, and thank you, Paul, for mm -hmm. delivering that for us. Okay. I think that's what I have, and I'll turn to the rest of you for announcements. Uh, maybe starting with Sue, would you like to you give to a report, report yeah. and then <coughs> your financial uh, announcements? This is the last um, town clerk report for 2012, and it is for December. Total local shares remitted to supervisor, $2,091.55. Amount remitted to New York. Agon Markets for the Spay or Neuter Program, $82. Amount remitted to New York State Department of Health for Marriage Licenses, $67.50. Amount remitted to New York Department of Racing and Wagering, $15. And amount remitted to New York State Environmental Conservation, $351.45 for a total state, county, and local revenues of $2,607.50. Pursuant to Section 27, Sub 1 of the Town Law, I hereby certify that the foregoing is a full and true statement of all fees and monies received by me, Sue McCann, Town Clerk, Town of Red Hook, during the period stated above in connection with my office. Um, and I just have a, a few little announcements. Um, as of yesterday, I had about 4,400 tax bills delivered to my office, and my deputy and I are right now in the process of sorting, changing some addresses, sorting out the banks. Um, so the bills will probably be mailed out no later than January 22nd. So everybody watch your mailboxes. If you do not receive a bill, 
please call me. I'll be very happy to get one for you. Um, Excuse me? We so look forward to hearing from you. Okay. You can always stop and get yours. There is, uh, there is something, and if I may, sure. if I may uh, make this point. Last year, um, one of our residents came in, and uh, it happened to be a school bill, but the bill was sent to the wrong address and was not delivered to her. <coughs> and as a result, she paid a penalty for late fees when she finally got it a month or more late. So if you have changed your address mm -hmm. in Red Hook, it would be important to let Sue McCann's office know that mm -hmm. so that as much as we don't love to have these delivered, it's worse to have them delivered late. So We do make but, every attempt to try right. to locate um, right. the residents, but actually technically you really have to contact the assessor's mm -hmm. office and they're the ones that will make the change. Oh, okay. Um, we've also, as of the end of December, started selling recycling um, permits. We've sold uh, approximately 375. The Recycle Center is selling them, and they had like a record day on Saturday, 142 they sold for us. So that was excellent. Um, so come on in and get your recycle permits. It's $15 for one, $18 for two, for the same household. Um, we also received um, a message from Royal Carding, and that is the garbage um, company that is allowed to be at the Recycle Center on Saturdays. And they said, this is to inform you that due to the enforcement of New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Regulations, the Saturday hours for the town's Recycle Center, as far as the garbage goes, will be from 7.30 to 12 noon. And that was effective as of January 5th. Um, Right now, the recycle center hours are still 8 to 1, but the gate should be open 7.30, for at least for the garbage to be um, dropped off, if, if you want that. Uh, I have also distributed to the town board members and supervisor uh, the town clerk financial report for 2012 and the financial report for receiver of taxes, and that's required by law that I distribute those, and I've done so in a timely manner. And I think that's about it for me. So, thank you. Great. Happy thank New you, Year, Sue. everybody. Thank you. <laughs> okay, starting with Bill on my right. Do you have any announcements, Bill? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Good to see you all here. And Brenda? <clears throat> yes, I have a couple of announcements. The first is that on um, January 19th, the Red Hook Recycles Group uh, is sponsoring a free townwide electronic waste recycling. Uh, there will be pickup in the Red Hook Village municipal parking lot. Uh, it's also combined with a food drive, so this is from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. January 19th in the village parking lot. <clears throat> the electronic waste that is accepted includes televisions, monitors, computers, uh, fax machines, scanners, printers, cell phones, etc. Basically everything with a cord except appliances. Uh, so this is a partnership between the 10% Challenge, uh, the Town of Red Hook, the Village of Red Hook, and Bard College. Um, also, and what's nice to announce now, actually, our Recycle Center mm -hmm. um, will accept these um, yes. electronic mm -hmm. wastes For as part of your recycle. Mm -hmm. If you have a permit right. to use the Recycling permit. Center, mm -hmm. Uh, any Saturday or Wednesday, you can also drop off your electronic waste uh, for no extra fee. Uh, the 10% challenge, actually, <coughs> although 20% challenge, is still promoting energy audits, audits in the town. They're uh, free for most people. And if you have questions about that program, you can email askenergyexpert at gmail.com. And uh, then we have a personal invitation to the town board members from our CAC chairperson to go to her house on Friday evening from 6 to 7 p.m. and hear the results of her own energy audit. So. That's all. Thank you, Brenda. Okay. And I would like to lastly say that... Um, we talked about doing reorg tonight, and which is to say that we establish the the way we do business for the year ahead. And one of the things that we've always talked about is getting closer to the communities around us, particularly the villages that are part of the town of Red Hook. 
And so this year we're going to try for the first time, since I've been supervisor, to hold a meeting in Tivoli. The second meeting of the month in February we will hold at Watts to Peister Hall. So, and it's, um, I, I think it would be a way of reaching out to the residents of Tivoli and hearing what's on their mind, especially during public comment. We, we always enjoy hearing from residents during public comment and um, it's a long way sometimes on a cold winter night to go all the way into Red Hook. So we'll hold our meeting on um, February 27th at Watts to Peister Hall on the third floor. And that's all we have. Um, is there any public comment tonight before we begin the agenda? Yes. Will the CAC be commenting on the hydrofracking that the DEC is accepting uh, comments on? I don't know. Uh, they have a meeting tomorrow night. Yeah, we've been mm -hmm. submitting our own personal comments through um, a couple different like web avenues, but not as, a, as an official body. I think we've all been doing it to like, increase the amount of comments you know, in the public comment period? Supposedly it ends January 11th, but they're thinking of extending it. So if anyone hasn't gotten their comments, then please do. Yeah, there's a very helpful web form if you're interested in commenting. I think it's called 30 Days of Fracking, where somebody has like made this whole form that it's very easy then to submit your comments to the correct DEC body. So if you Google it, I think it's 30 Days of Fracking. 30 days of fracking. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank comments. you. Yeah, thank days. you for comments. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? Hearing none, um, let's begin with the first item on the agenda. And it is a response to Mr. Gray regarding a request to be on the agenda and talk to the town board about the farmer's market zoning code. So would you like to take a few minutes and do that? Mr. Greg, out of courtesy, we don't usually do this. This really comes before the planning board, not the town board, but out of, out of courtesy to you, I'd like to have everybody hear what you have to say. Good evening. Um, <coughs> is this on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Norman Gregg. I'm a second generation <coughs> family farmer in Upper Red Hook. Uh, I'm here tonight to ask the town board for relief <coughs> from what I think is a mistake in the zoning code, in the new zoning code, and I think it's not only a mistake, but I think it's damaging uh, to agriculture as we know it in the agriculture business zone. I'll give you a little background. The, what, the, the requirement by the new code requires um, a special permit and um, site plan for a farmer's market in the agriculture business district. The, um, this is an issue that I went to the Intermunicipal about three years ago when they were drafting it. Um, I suggested that that was inappropriate then. Um, the Intermunicipal uh, um, I met again with on Monday and I suggested again that I think it's inappropriate and I'll tell you why. There seems to be some confusion about um, the difference between a farm stand, a farm market, and a farmer's market. A farm stand, farmers can sell as a matter of right whatever they grow in an open-air open arrangement of, of uh, shelves. A farm market is a store, um, and that is subject to site plan review and because it's a permanent store and it has um, regular hours. A farmer's market is the same as the first one. It's an open-air arrangement of shelves where farmers sell what they grow uh, to, direct to the public. And it's um, the Hudson Valley Farmers Market, as we're doing it, is a, a, a collaboration of local farmers, each selling their own products. Uh, in the, in the, the, since 1942, when my father started farming in, in Red Hook, our, our right as a farmer is to grow and harvest and sell what we grow. And Red Hook has long been enamored with the bucolic nature of agriculture, and we get a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm in Red Hook about being the breadbasket of Dutchess County. Um, and, and everyone loves our pastoral uh, view, but it's, it's always been difficult for Red Hook to get their mind around the commercial aspect that is agriculture. 
Now zoning normally talks about how we live and setbacks and spacing and um, but and and uh, on the Greg farm where we farmed we farmed 30 years before zoning, growing and selling our own product, and then 20 years uh, as non-conforming use in the one-acre residential zone, growing and selling our product, and then 10 years in as non-conforming use in the three-acre residential product uh, district, growing and selling our product. When when they first talked about an agricultural business zone, I was uncomfortable with it because unlike the zoning for the rest of Red Hook, we're not talking about how we live, we're talking about our livelihood, and we're talking about regulation that's passed by mostly non-farmers who don't really understand that much about how we grow and harvest and sell our crops. So when I'm told that I'm supposed to get a two, pay $250 to apply for a permit to, for us to sell our crops, I would suggest that that's a dangerous path uh, because it's not very different than, than the pick your own business that we've been doing since the 1950s. And, you know, we grow and sell our crop right in the field. And if you start telling us where we can sell and what we can sell and how we're going to access that field, we have nothing but space on the farm. We have a lot of room. It's not about having room enough for parking. You know, and this farmer's market, we have, we have the best growers in in Red Hook and, and surrounding area, we have noteworthy crops from the rest of the state of New York. And we, you know, I mean, what's the site plan going to do? Are they going to tell us that we have to have red pop-ups instead of blue pop-ups instead of white pop-ups? Or the Miguelli stand is going to have to be the first one in and Feather Ridge is going to have to be the second one in? I don't understand it. It's undue regulation, it's inappropriate, and it interferes directly with our right to farm. So I'm asking for the town board to give us relief from what I think is a mistake in the zoning code. You have questions? Anyone? No. Yeah. I'd like to clarify that last uh, statement you made. The the request is to give Greg Farm relief. No. Is that what you're asking? No, absolutely not. The code should be changed to, to say that that a farmer's market in the town of Red Hook should be as a matter of right, not by site plan approval. Not for application to, for site plan approval. I'm not looking for anything special for my farm. I'm looking for the okay. for, for farming in Red Hook. Okay, I understand. I just want to For farming clarify. in Red Hook to thrive. Okay. And the farmer's market that you're proposing, is it only to sell your own product? Each farmer sells their own products, yes. Okay. So you're not proposing that the the market that you are asking to initiate include other farmers selling there on that site. It's strictly your own product. Product. Farm market is where. No, no. I'm asking you. I'm, are I'm you? In, what are your intentions to A sell your market. own products or to sell yours and other products? A farm market is where a farmer sells his own products and other products, and it's a store. That requires site plan approval. Mm -hmm. A farmer's market is a, is a collaboration of farmers where they each come and they have their own little uh, pop-up and they each sell their own products. I'm not selling anyone else's products. We're selling, each farmer is selling their own products in the agricultural district zone, the agricultural business zone. So where more appropriate than the agricultural business zone is a farmer's market where we sell our own products. This is how we make our livelihood. Okay. Thank you. Um, if I could maybe add a little bit. <clears throat> After we met last week, I spent a good deal of time talking to Ag and Marcus. And I haven't spoken to them yet. Pardon? I haven't spoken to them. Well, um, I have a copy of they. They faxed me their their background information and their recommendations and 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 how the, in what in the ways that they would support and suggest we do we we, we handle farm markets and farmers market and they and they do make a distinction I can give you a copy of that um, we also have have a, I have a copy of uh, those aspects of our zoning that directly relate to this and uh, you're correct the farm market is um, is actually a simple thing it was intended when we wrote the zoning to to provide a farmer with a very easy avenue 
for selling products that were uh, that were farm products from that, that particular farm. A farmer's market becomes essentially a grocery store, and therefore it it <coughs> may require it and it and it is a farmer um, selling products on his farm, his or her farm, from um, many suppliers and many other farms, including fish, meat, whatever, whatever, and it, and it requires a, a, a fairly extensive site plan uh, because it essentially becomes a grocery store, uh, a public grocery store. There's, you have to go through what, whatever gyrations are necessary for public safety, health and safety, and, and anything else that, that applies to that. Um, and those distinctions are rather are rather important and are, are are outlined and identified in the in the zoning. In fact, we expanded in the zoning. We have not only farm market one; we have uh, three versions of farm markets, singular. Um, and farm market three was essentially added to a lot of things like tax box, tax shops, and that sort of thing. Um, just to use one example, um, the, the farmers market. Uh, gets well beyond that and 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 becomes a rather significant establishment uh, that goes beyond the limits of, of of the town itself and requires the engagement of the the board of health etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and not true. It, it's well that's, that's not true. well I think if you read the agon markets and you read our zone the zoning I have both of them here that um, that you'll, you'll find that basically that is, that is true, and that is, that's the difference between the zoning. Um, Agate Markets has, and you might look on here on page five, what they call a streamlined site plan for a farm market, and our site plan requires actually less than Agate Markets suggested uh, site plan. We're not doing a farm market, we're doing a farmer's market. I know, and that makes it much more complicated. Why don't you take this and read it, and Perhaps we'll have to meet again. I'm not sure this is uh, the right <coughs> forum to well, do this in the casual I'll basis. I'll speak to, to Aggie Market. I have to tell you, it, it's, it's always a very sad day for me when we have to go to the state to interpret what right to farm is, when, when I, to explain that to the community that supposedly embraces what we do for, for our livelihood. And so it, it's really... I didn't go to the state about this because I thought you could get to the right place about it without them. I'll go to the state and get a second opinion from them as well. So, yes. Uh, so if I, could, I mean, there's three categories of farm markets, but you're specifically right. saying not farm markets, but you're saying farmers market. market. Right. Like well, what we have here on Saturday up at the village park. Right. Okay. And it's nothing like the grocery store. No, we yeah. don't sell our product in Norman. We take it there and sell it ourselves. I sell fresh chicken and eggs at the market. You know, I bring it in. I bring my money in. I deal with my customers. I sell the product myself. Mm -hmm. Norman's not selling anything at the farmer's market. You know, it's not a farm's Okay. Stand. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm sure we'll sort it out. The next item on the agenda, unless someone else has anything to add, we'll move on to the next item. <coughs> and it is a set of resolutions, two to be exact, that uh, relate to youth delinquency programs that are sponsored by Dutchess County that we have participated in our recreation program and the Red Hook Central School District has participated in for many years. And the resolutions relate to um, authorizing us to accept funding from New York State Office of Children and Family Services for Youth Development Delinquency Prevention Projects for 2013 on file with the Office of Family Services and Dutchess County Division of Youth Services and execution of documents in connection therewith. And so I would move that I be authorized to enter into that contract. In the case of the Youth Development Delinquency Prevention, the amount of money we will be applying for 
is $1,580. And in the case of the program that is conducted through uh, the Red Hook Central School District uh, uh, Guidance Office, which is Conflict Resolution Peer Mentoring Bias Awareness Program, the amount of money being applied for is $1,417. I so move. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And we'll submit these immediately to the program. Okay. We have next on the agenda the dog park discussion, and um, maybe we'll turn to our friend Paul Piastro, who has uh, pulled together a committee, an impressive committee, actually, of 13 volunteers so far, as I know, um, who are all interested in collaborating uh, with the village of Rhinebeck and developing on Rhinebeck's land, but in the town of Red Hook, a dog recreation park. So um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about that and where, where, that's, where that is right now, Paul? <coughs> it's up at the uh, intersection of Metzger and uh, Stone Church. Mm -hmm. Those are the uh, soccer fields there. Yes. And it's uh, between the two main soccer fields. There's an area, uh, approximately, I would say about two acres in size, that we want to uh, fence off and uh, make a dog park. Uh, we started this back in May, I believe it was, of, of last year. And... Uh, We've been uh, getting volunteers. I've been trying to scratch materials, which we've been pretty successful in getting fencing. Um, I got a donation of somebody to dig all the holes for the posts. Anybody who knows how to dig posts, it's pretty difficult, especially if they're so rock. Uh, and uh, I'm just working now on some posts and, and cement. Um, I didn't realize at the time how government works. <laughs> The pace of it. I was hoping that yeah, how speedy it is. <laughs> so we're working on that part. Um, basically, it's an intermunicipal agreement between uh, the town of Rhinebeck and the town of Red Hook. Uh, there would be a fee, a permit to use the park, um, a minor fee of uh, $20. Uh, so there'd be some control over who uses the parks. So there'd be a tag issued. And uh, I'm assuming that the money's handled through the, the town uh, clerk. Uh, the uh, owners would be on their, their own, basically, under certain rules uh, uh, to use the park, and, and uh, anybody who goes online and researches dog parks can understand that there's, there's a lot to it, how to separate the dogs and not allow certain species in there, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, one problem we ran into is we don't, do not have a water source there, but the Rhinebeck did buy a water tank, and they're going to uh, have that. We're going to fill it over at the town uh, place over there and, and bring it for, for water. We're dependent a lot on volunteers to be stewards of this park. In, in other words, we'll be giving our own time to bring water over, to help clean uh, uh, the, the uh, area, and also to construct it. We're doing all volunteer construction on this dog park, and I'll let the town know when that is so you can put something out so we get more volunteers. Um, <laughs> Uh, other than that, I'm assuming in future years we may be coming to the town board for uh, some minor uh, costs uh, in the future. This year, I, I understand we're not, but um, in the future we may, we may need some some operating costs, uh, very minor again. Uh, but again, we're looking for mostly donations uh, to get this thing going. Uh, my dog is waiting breathlessly for this. <laughs> <laughs> I promised him many times. Uh, so th that's about it. I, mean, I can take any questions. Uh, if anybody, uh, uh, we, we did the site plan uh, approval. I don't know if that was approved by the zoning here or not. Um, but th that's in the process. And I think that's the last step other than doing the, the paperwork and getting the forms uh, done and so forth. So if there's any questions, uh, anybody, I can... Uh, when do you expect to be open? I don't. 
I'm pushing for the spring. As soon as the ground thaws, oh, okay. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. rock anyway, but yeah. as soon as the ground thaws, yeah. mm -hmm. we start with the, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, got to find some cement someplace. I need 60 bags of cement. So, um, the town of Rhinebeck has passed a local law yes. that that enables them to levy fees and conduct this business with, I presume, insurance and other matters that, when a town sponsors something, has have to be considered. Do you is it expected from the town of Red Hook? Would it not be appropriate for the town of Red Hook to pass its own local law oh, regarding its citizenry and the participants there? Mm -hmm. um, right. Uh, you, you need to, to protect yourself. Right. Uh, part of the, the uh, permit uh, will be a form that the applicant will fill out with some kind of waiver on it. Okay. And I don't know how much juice that holds, but mm -hmm. there would be some type of minor waiver mm -hmm. on there, too. And also the signs posted at the park would also... And and is there a is there a, a maximum capacity that that we're, we need to be concerned about in terms of the space involved well, and how many well, dogs? The, that the area is approximately four hundred by four fifty. You have to separate two sizes of dogs above thirty pounds, below thirty. Um, so you've got basically two areas that are approximately 200 by 200, approximately. Um, so in a space 200 by 200, how many dogs can you hold mm -hmm. safely without them ganging up on each other? Mm -hmm. uh, you can go again online and look that up. Um, I think we could hold a fair number. Okay. I don't expect we'll get you know 100 mm -hmm. dogs at once, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, and I, I'm just trying to. There's enough land there we can always expand in the future. Okay. If need be, we can move the fence, you know, probably another 50 feet in each direction. Mm -hmm. um, the other board members, Brenda, since you're our dog liaison, mm -hmm. would you um, have questions or concerns or question, you know, comments? Um, not really. A Bruce came before the planning board the other night, and I heard his talk, and um, sounds like they're considering uh, everything. It needs to be considered. One, one thing that had been mentioned in Rhinebeck, I guess, was that the space is not so visible. There was some concern about safety. Yeah, there, there was uh, <coughs> one person who uh, did uh, voice concern about that, <coughs> walking from the parking lot down to where this dog park is, mm -hmm. and honestly, I don't have a solution. I mean, if you want to put electricity in, fine, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no other place to put the dog park. There's a small area of grass there, but they use that for some parking, and there's an overflow. So there really is no other place in that in that uh, vicinity to, to put the dog park. Um, and honestly, I don't have a, a suggestion for her other than the hours that she goes to use the dog park. I just I don't have a solution for that. Mm -hmm. What would be the hours of use for the dog park? Um, most dog parks are like sunrise to sunset, and that's something we'd have to look at. Uh, I, I know there is a vandalism concern up there, too. Um, and again, the stewards, are they going to be responsible for going every night to lock the gate and so forth? And that's a manpower concern. So uh, I haven't uh, thought about what hours to actually close, but I know a lot of them that I Research goes sunrise to sunset, uh, you know, which is obviously a lot shorter this time of year. They close at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's tough, especially if you work. You want to come home, take your dog up there. It's tough during the winter. And I hope to, we open it year round. I hope we can do that. Get somebody mm -hmm. to plow that little area there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Bill or Harry, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. No. There was an issue of, uh, of the planning, paying a planning board <coughs> fee. Did we resolve that? And we wind up paying a fee to ourselves, but it didn't make a lot of sense. Would you like it. to make a motion to waive that f application fee? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Doesn't make sense to uh, charge ourselves, does it? <laughs>
Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thank you for your volunteerism. And uh, one thing that occurred to me as you were talking is, is the park to be open whether or not there are volunteers there as kind of overseers? Yes. Yeah, we'd have to do that. Yeah. I can't right. See where we, you know, yeah. Get you. Into a schedule yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Work with, with right. I just want to make sure I uh, was envisioning it. All the time, but it would have to periodically mm -hmm. be visited to, to help clean it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. take care of the bags so it wouldn't be locked up. It would be the, the gate would be accessible. I haven't, just, you know, I haven't thought about locking right. it at night. I don't okay. Know. Okay. Um, there'd probably be no need to because there's nothing really to steal in a dark right. park. Right. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I imagine we will um, thrash out the details of. A local law if we intend to have one and we won't do it tonight but have you have you questions that Christine well, I will and maybe we could ask Brenda and um, Paul um, maybe we could ask Brenda and Paul to meet um, with me uh, to go through what's mm -hmm. needed to coordinate with the town okay okay Okay, so do you want to set a date tonight or do you want to no, you give, them, give them a call? Okay, okay, fine. All right. So we come to the fourth on the agenda, which is the Conservation Easement Review Committee has presented to us a final report. And we thank them for that. And I see there are members of that committee with us. Thank you for taking the time to spend on this issue since we frankly didn't know exactly what to do with it. And uh, each of us who sit up here, I'm sure, have different ideas about how this could and might be addressed. So, um, Marianne, I guess you chaired the committee. Do you? Do you have any comments? This has been laid on the desk. I don't think we're going to make a decision. This is a pretty comprehensive yeah, decision. Yeah. yeah. No, I would just, um, if I could, take a few moments to thank the board. Mm -hmm. I know you were all several months ago in the process of you know, contemplating removing the program, and um, several of us spoke out. And, Foolishly, when you speak out, you stand here. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank the board for giving us the opportunity to review the program and provide you with uh, some of our thoughts. I'd also like to thank um, my committee members who, through you know, my busy schedule and their busy schedule, we managed to get through this. Uh, you know, I think we had six or seven meetings. So I'd thank John, um, Douglas, Chris Kane, and Sarah and Bowden. Um, as well as Trilby Severin, who's not here tonight. So um, I appreciate their effort and their time. And we want to thank them, too. Okay. I didn't know how diligent you all were. Okay. There was one month there. I don't know what happened, but we just mm -hmm. couldn't get together. Mm -hmm. um, so just sort of as some background, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're all aware, but in case some of the folks sitting here are aware, the town currently has a, uh, a conservation easement program where landowners with 10 contiguous acres or more can uh, agree to not develop their land in, um, and in exchange they can be considered for a reduction in their assessed value. Um, we took a look at our program, which uh, I believe we established in 2005 or six, if I'm remembering correctly, and compared that to some other things that are going on in other towns, as well as you know we looked at it in the context of things that have changed here in Red Hook. Um, we tried to evaluate how many you know, parcels was still out there that could be eligible um, uh, you know, to pursue the program. Um, we looked at some other towns and, and the laws that they had in place. Um, and essentially, if you take a look, when you get a chance at the uh, first page of our report, you know, we're saying you should essentially keep the program. It is a conservation option. The town has devoted a lot of time and effort and energy into updating its plans and its um, zoning code to preserve the rural character of the town, agriculture in the town, et cetera. And this is an option for some of those parcels that aren't big enough to be considered for 
uh, other programs like selling their development rights, et cetera. Um, we uh, looked at possibly increasing those term periods, making them a little longer, um, uh, including some stricter penalties. Um, and we gave you some examples, uh, you know, ours. There are penalties in our current law. We feel they could be uh, a little stricter to make sure that when somebody's considering it, they take it um, seriously. Um, we do feel that we need to find a way to make sure they do get the reduction because if they're not going to get a reduction, they are not going to participate. Um, and you know, ensure that there's a process in place to make sure that that parcel is worthy of the, of the reduction that they are seeking. Um, one of the uh, things the town could take a look at is uh, seeking state enabling legislation, such as the town of Orchard Park did, um, and that would resolve uh, some of the issues that we've talked about. Um, we'd also need to consider having a monitoring committee um, to make sure that these easements were, in fact, uh, being enforced. Um, we also contemplated some ideas that I'm not sure the town attorney is going to be happy with this about, but <laughs> um, consider having an enrollment period instead of just this wide open, you can apply whenever you want, you know, so we can, you know, clean up the process and have, I think, better control of it, as well as maybe limit the number of easements that you accept per year so that you are, um, you know, mindful of your budget and, you know, what, we're, what you're trying to accomplish. So those were just some of our thoughts. There's pages up here of information for you to read. Um, we did take a look at, you know, what some of the tax implications could be. We, you know, picked some parcels out randomly and said, hey, if these 38 were to go in the program, what would happen? So that, that analysis is in there as well. Mary Ann, could you just give, a, like, maybe an example of a, a kind of a parcel that where you think this would be most, uh, most suited? Uh, it's kind of hard to do, but I mean, if you think, if you think about your community preservation <coughs> plan, mm -hmm. and the parcels have already been evaluated and they've been put in the plan because they've been deemed worthy of some sort of mm -hmm. protection, I think you could probably find some parcels in there that, you know, are 10 acres, between 10 and probably 30 acres that aren't necessarily going to be able to get the PDR money that would be, they might want to look at this kind of program. And it would be fulfilling the town's goals as well as, you know, hopefully there's in our PDR money, we should know it runs out um, this year. So that program would be that program would be. So parcels eligible for this program may not be eligible for those other tools we have. Correct. You know, it's about building up a package. You know, having multiple tools to try to achieve the town's plans. What, in what way would this uh, be impacted or um, controlled in terms of the, the quality of the land for uh, uh, farm use? We have a lot of land that's obviously plowed and it's a farm. We have a lot of other land that's a cliff and can't ever be a farm. Right. Um, and how, how, does, how do those two types of land, that the, the farmland would obviously qualify? Well, if, I will say this. If you are farming and you are receiving the agricultural exemption, yeah. you're, this, this isn't going to be any good. You're already receiving the break that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. okay? So it may help some beginning farmers who haven't quite hit the threshold of receiving the ag exemption. Mm -hmm. It'll help get them started. Um, it may help retiring farmers who are trying to figure out what to do with their land, but they're not you know, meeting the thresholds. So there's, you know, some possibilities there, and there's probably more I haven't even thought of. Uh, in terms of the cliff lands, they're probably not going to be eligible because part of the criteria is, is this land available? So if it's a cliff, it's going to go through the process, it's going to be evaluated, and you're going to say, there's not a whole lot of development potential there. But if it's a hillside with a couple of flat pillars on it, where you could put a house, um, even though it may not be suitable, reasonably suitable for farming, it would be, uh, it would qualify for this. Well, it would have to go through the process. Yeah, I right. I understand a blanket. that. Mm -hmm. It qualifies, and you get it. There's, there's going to be, you know, currently their program has criteria, and these parcels are evaluated. And we're suggesting that that stays in place, and maybe that criteria even has a second one. Yeah, yeah. We remember one of the 
also things that we discussed was, um, you know, the town and the villages have talked a lot about protecting gateways, and that's often involves smaller parcels that may have development potential, and this could be an opportunity for uh, a win-win situation where the town wants those uh, parcels to not be either, either fur further developed or perhaps if they are undeveloped to remain undeveloped um, in terms of a period of time where there's planning happening, like maybe if the town is going to go through a, a next time it goes through a um, master planning project, you know, it might be nice to have those parcels stay in a certain way while that's happening. Um, and then it could be a you know a win for those landowners to um, receive a benefit for helping fill that public um, purpose. So that you know that's kind of one of the examples that we talked about was in gateway situations where you might need to have multiple smaller properties come together to to create the uh, protection around those areas that you need it. There could also be um, opportunities where a property provides a buffer for something. Um, it could provide a buffer for an agricultural property. It could provide a buffer along, you know, a, one of our scenic roads or our historic roads or something like that, where it's key property, may may be ten or less, or, I mean, only around ten or twelve acres, so it might not qualify for some of the other tools that we have, but this might be something that would work. Can I ask one question: Would properties which are larger than the properties we've been describing also be eligible for this program? Is it sure. intended that it would potentially encompass a 100 acre parcel or a 50 acre parcel? I think so. I mean, potentially it could, but some of the other uh, protection options that we have in the town might be better suited for those kinds of that size of parcel. So that's kind of it, you know, as Marianne was saying, it's, it's another tool in the toolbox when a property owner comes in and goes through the criteria evaluation process that's already in place to see which, which program it makes more sense for them to be in. We, we did not talk about having a maximum at eight group. I, I, most of my um, concern in reading this, so there, I have a couple of concerns, but the monitoring committee concerns me um, just remembering uh, monitoring parcels is is a big business. I mean, it, it's it's not a simplistic idea. And to assume that we would have trained volunteers in the future, you know, every year into the future, to provide this monitoring structure, to me is, um, if if not unrealistic, very sketchy. Uh, that said. The other piece of it would be, in terms of the um, the value of the properties and how they are how they are determined to be valued. That isn't that the, the assessor's job. That it, it's to be uniquely his job forever and ever, and that we are not to interfere with that. Not town board members, not planning board members, and certainly not committee members or private citizens. To, to try to influence the determination of an assessor, I think, would be a big mistake. So I have that concern as maybe primary and some others regarding um, just reducing the, the value, the, the actual assess, assessed value, total value in town. Remember three or four years ago when the bottom fell out, we lost, in assessed value in the town of Red Hook, we lost $62 million of assessed value in one year. And as a result, the tax um, rate <coughs> went way up. So it affected every taxpayer, regardless of the value of their property. And I worry about that when I see anything that indicates that we're losing assessed valuation. It, it spreads the cost of the tax base over fewer and fewer people all the time. And, and I have a, a serious concern about that. That's what our current program does. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. someone were to come in, mm -hmm. that is essentially mm -hmm. what, what happens. So that we have that in place in town today. Um, in terms of the monitoring, I think that we would need to think about scaling it 
to what we have here and what our capabilities are. I, would I tell you it's going to be perfect 100%? No, I don't think so. But I think that you probably need to have some element of, you know, taking a peek. I'm not saying you need to take a peek every week, but I think it would be valuable. And I, I do believe that there would be people interested in town in, in fulfilling that. Personally, I'm speaking personally. Well, actually, a lot of land trusts do give trained volunteers to do their monitoring also. It's, in that case, it's an annual requirement, so it's once a year. Um, and once you have the, the baseline you know, done from your first visit, then it's just checking to see, compare from year mm -hmm. to year. Um, and we do have you know, some great volunteers in town. A number of people have gone through some really long-term training, like the biodiversity um, workshop that was a lot of hours and a lot of time that people put into that. Uh, the CAC certainly already has put a lot of time into really uh, developing the evaluation criteria that's currently used under the program we have in place now. So I agree with Marianne that I do think that there would be people in town who would be um, willing to, to take on that task of the monitoring. We also um, did speak to other towns who have monitoring programs, and it didn't seem that that was as much of a burden. They have many more applicants out for participants than we have, at least right now. Some of the towns, um, I don't know, have more than 25 for sure participants. And monitoring didn't seem a big concern to them, but I think if we did decide to go ahead with the program, we'd want to do a better survey of those programs and really get a sense for what other towns are doing. Um, but that was just, the monitoring didn't seem to be mm -hmm. too much of a burden to them when we asked about it. And when the files, looking looking through the files today, um, I noticed an estimate of monitoring costs per parcel are approximately $5,000 annually per parcel for that, for that service or that function. And I can just tell you, we haven't got it, you know? We just haven't got it. So that we'd have to look at this when we're building a budget next year and figure out between now and then, how much is it going to cost us? How many people are we talking about? Well, and what the, the, the you know, an endowment piece is about $5,000 so that it can go into a fund and kick off the subsequent the several hundred dollars a year that it's the actual cost for the monitoring. So I'm not exactly sure what you were looking at, but you know, in my experience when I was working on this before, that's how we would set it up. We, we would say, what's the annual monitoring cost? And a fairly simple easement, particularly if it's a small piece of property and there's not going to be a lot of travel because we're in one town, um, you know, would probably be several hundred dollars a year. So at that point, we would work backwards and say, well, if we need to have that amount each year, what would we look for? as a, uh, in that case, a, a gift or a donation that we could in, have invested and the interest would provide that annual need. So I'm not sure where, I know $5,000 was a lot of times about where that number came out, so I'm not sure if that's where you had seen that number, but the annual costs were usually between, you know, two or two three hundred dollars And that included consulting fees or any other? Um, that was like staff time and is that, photos and I don't mind, is that? Addressed in here? No. The cost, the cost of monitoring? No, it's not. So that, that's an, uh, an additional cost, probably to the property owner. Well, the only. In, the in only which case it might offset. One could, you come up with a zero balance. <laughs> well, that's why the only way that we addressed it was by saying that perhaps it could be done with the hospital. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else on the agenda that we need to discuss? I, you know, I think that 5000 may have come up when uh, Winnicky and others had approached us about uh, towns holding these small easements and they were <coughs> to propose a way to solve that problem countywide. I thought they were asking for 5000 total from each municipality per year. I thought that that's where that number came from. But anyway. Perhaps. <coughs> um, I do remember that conversation. Council Supervisor. I'm the uh, only no vote. I saw that, John, and I was so surprised. Um, <laughs> I felt it was important that I come this evening to explain my vote. Um, if I have my information correct, the uh, program was put in place in 05 or 06 approximately. Mm -hmm. right. And we've had, uh, if I understand it correctly, approximately 12 applicants. 
nine found out that their assessments would not change because they own property with swamps or the property was appropriately assessed and they were not going to get a reduction in their assessment. So they decided not to fulfill the procedure to get into the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One gentleman pulled out of the program and went into the ag exemption program. Mm -hmm. And the uh, other two are in the program. And so that's 12 applicants in uh, six years, if I have my numbers correct. We're talking approximately 243 parcels, approximately. <coughs> If you take 240, if all these 240 decide that they want to join this program, if it is modified as suggested by the rest of the committee, uh, I did not realize there was a fee for uh, that part of the cost to make sure that they have done nothing to their property. So obviously there's got to be some sort of review, and I did not take that into consideration when we were discussing all this. I don't think any of the, I don't think it came up in our discussions, truthfully. But if you take uh, 240 and multiply by uh, 100, that's 24,000, and then multiply it by two, because I think Chris King just said 200 to $300 a parcel. Uh, so we'll just use the $200 number. That's $48,000 right there. <coughs> then I ran some tax numbers on the 38 parcels that we looked at as potential applicants of receiving this program. And you're looking at approximately a $350,000 hit in taxes, school, town, Fire, Red Oak Library, Tivoli Library, uh, except $350,000 that the other parcels have to pick up. Now, very late in the game, I learned that the it's not the town parcels that would be picking up this cost. It would be all parcels in the town of Red Oak. And I did not realize that. It includes the Tivoli Village and the Red Hook the Village taxpayers would have to pay for this cost. Mm -hmm. But they cannot take advantage of, which I find, find very disheartening. Here we, we're forcing something upon them that they have to pay for, but they can't take advantage of. And there's five parcels that could take advantage of it in one of the two villages. And I don't know exactly what the layout is. I don't know how many parcels are in Tivoli, and I don't know how many parcels in the village of Redding. But there's approximately five. And they would not be able to take part of this program, but they would have to pay for it. <coughs> the town assessor ran some numbers, and taking a 2%, excuse me, I've got the wrong piece of paper here. Just increasing our taxes by 2% over a 15 year period for 38 parcels. 15 years per his numbers, Scott Hobson. You're looking at a, an expenditure by the town, the rest of the town taxpayers of 919,543 and 71 cents over 15 years. <coughs> Those are some of the costs, and you have the paperwork up there, and you can review it, etc. Mm -hmm. Then, what the committee has proposed is that we not have the assessor who has to go to training classes to be trained to assess properties and he has to continue with his CEUs every year, mandated training, mm -hmm. that the assessor be taken out of the picture. And we have a committee that follows uh, procedures delineated by 
the town board. And if the property owner basically meets the criteria, then I don't see how the committee could deny the property owner from the reduction in his taxes for his property. And I have a problem with that. The town has hired an assessor. We train him. The state says he must have training. As, on that, I'm under the same assumption that the training has to be done by our town attorney every year. Mm -hmm. I know the judges have to go to training every year, as does our code enforcement officers. And we're taking the most trained individual <coughs> out of the picture. <coughs> and you have to get enabling legislation to do this, signed off by the governor and the state assembly and the state senate. Then you must go to Dutchess County Legislature and get them to approve this plan also. And then you have to go to the school board and get their approval. I do not know if you have to go to the village or of Red Hook or the village of Tillman. I'm not certain about that. So we have all these costs. <clears throat> if all the properties, which are approximately 243 properties decide what they would like to apply, and at some point they are all involved in this program, that's almost a full-time job for someone to oversee. Now we go back to the monitoring, exactly what Town Supervisor Sue Crane brought up a little bit ago. Another problem is we in the town of Red Hook do not have a map and a chart of some kind explaining what properties are under conservation easement and a map showing exactly where the parcels are. There are all kinds of maps. I've received all kinds of information. It is very convoluted and very tough to delineate exactly what is what. Mary Ann has spent an enormous amount of time trying to uh, ascertain this information. Um, we have a map that we found in the town hall of Red Oak, dated April 13, 2012. And it shows all kinds of land that's under conservation easement, and public owned parks, and total preserved land. And it's stating that there's 5,188 acres of preserved land in the town of Red Oak. Well, if you look at our chart that Mary Ann put together, she spent an inordinate amount of time putting that together and trying to come up with numbers, etc. She she says we have 4,020 acres. The town of Red Oak needs to ascertain from Winnicky Land Trust, the Dutchess Land Conservatory, the Scenic Hudson the state of New York, the federal government, and the town has spent um, millions of dollars in preservation of properties in the town. The planning board in the 90s preserved most of the golf course. But a lot of people forgot that. And it's been lost in paperwork, buried in some drawer in the planning department, but most of the property at the golf course, the Red Golf Course, is under, present, uh, under some sort of protection plan that the planning board negotiated with the developers when they built the townhomes. We, the town of Red Hook, for their planning the board, their zoning board, and the town board, zoning officer and the building inspector and the assessor should have documentation and a map. The most important thing is a map to show you what parcels are under conservation easement of some kind. We don't have that. We have all kinds of stuff, but we don't have it all under one 
nice, neat package that can be followed very easily. And that's going to take some time. I've had discussions with our assessor. He doesn't have that information. I've received information from Sue. I've received other things from the town. And it's just a, it's here, there, but it's not in a nice, neat package where the zoning board, the planning board, the zoning enforcement officer, the building inspector and assessor can follow. And that is very important. Because as time rolls on, memories fade, and then we could have a house built on a piece of a property that a house shouldn't be built on that happened in the city of Kingston a few years ago. And then they went to court, and there was all kinds of court action, then they had maybe a possibility of demolishing the home, and you know, I forget the end result, but it hit the papers, and it was in the papers for quite a while. We should have a, a nice, informational packet for all the different boards, town board, etc. So everybody knows. We're all on the same footprint. We're all on the same page. With all that said, we have spent a lot of money to preserve property. I voted yes for our, our purchase developmental rights back in, I think, 02. I forget exactly what year it was. I think it's a good program. On the other hand, this program, based on the information that I have received, I believe that the assessor's doing his job. And I, how many more hits are we supposed to take to preserve land? We're paying one pocket to the federal government, one pocket to the state, one pocket to the county, one pocket to the town of Reno. And now we've got to pay another pocket to the town of Reno. And then the village residents have no say in it. They have to pay for it, but they can't even become part of the program that they would like to. That seems unfair to me. So in all of this, I would like to state that the town of Red Hook bought property for town of Red Hook Rec Park 2. That's what I call it, 2. Mm -hmm. On Linden Avenue, and it sits storm because we don't have any money. Now, if the town decides they could do some stuff down there without a lot of money, we have a highway department that if we decide to use highway workers, a couple of highway workers, and put them on, I believe, A fund, <coughs> they could spend a couple of weeks down there working on the Aspen Wall Way bike path mm -hmm. instead of hiring private contractors. We could take a ditch for the water line that you'd like to build instead of trying to get a grant for $70,000. We have a backhoe, and that's nice digging earth up there. It's not too much rock in that particular zone. It used to be a farm. I know the property as well as you do, and uh, we could do those sort of things. We've got to sort of think outside the box. But we haven't done anything because you tell us no money. But now we're looking at the possibility of spending I don't know how much money, and then telling the taxpayers they've got to pay for it with another pocket in this sort of economy. Please take that all into consideration. I'm for saving farms. I'm for saving Red Hook. I am a Red Oak resident. I was born and raised here, and I, I, you know, I have feelings for my town. With all that said, though, how much more are you going to stretch the senior citizens? Please think about all those consequences. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, I think we've probably spent as much time as we can do tonight. So I commend this to the town board for study, and um, I take seriously, John, your comment about there not being one map, one place where we can go for details about all the preserved properties in town. 
and I think that's a very important um, observation if it's true. I thought we came really close with the Community Preservation Fund map in showing what existed at any at a, at a point in time. It's a moving target because we've recently just closed on another 158 acres, so when that happens, then that map changes and the details about it change. But it, nevertheless, the observation is a good one, and and um, I think that's something to be recommended, and we and we should take that seriously. Um, hopefully, by the end of 2013, that map won't change that much anymore. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how many people wish to to apply for community preservation funding or whatever other avenues they have. Um, to preserve land, but I'll remember that and and try to keep that on our up on our agenda because I think that's an important thing to have that tool, that map. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right, so we'll move on to, if we may, to the reorganization, which is the last item on our agenda before some correspondence. Every year we look at our town appointments and our annual reorganization. And we have in front of us, I, I believe you all have, the Town of Red Hook resolution number, and I presume it would be number one, would it not, for January 8th. Yes. Um, relating to annual reorganization, and Christine has provided us with, um, actually it's a three-page, four-page document, but the, the pages are really page one and it's two. one and two, the others from here. Yeah, and the others are the town clerks. So I'm going to ask um, from my right, Bill O'Neill, if you can read one, two, and three. Um, be it resolved that the town board of the town for can we go through these, yeah, Christine? Exactly. Red, you know, right through them, and then vote. We don't have to take them one at a time, surely. Okay. So number one, the meeting dates would be um, in each month at 7:30, the second Tuesday and fourth Wednesday. And then additional special meetings may be scheduled and announced by posting the announcement. At the town hall is required by town code with notification to the press as required by the public officer's law. Number two, that the official newspapers would be uh, for 2013 with the Picture Journal and the Kingston Freeman. And number three, that the depositories, the financial institutions, um, shall be the official depositories of the uh, town for all town monies for 2013 would be QBank, m and Bank, and J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Well, you're doing so well, why don't you just keep right Number on going, Number four, the bill. petty cash, pursuant to Section 64 of the town law, the following offices are authorized to maintain a petty cash fund in the following amounts, and they're not to exceed $200 per officer or $1,000 per receiver. That would be the town clerk as the receiver, uh, $500. Number five is salaries to be paid to the town board of the town of Red Hook uh, for elected officials for 2013 supervisor, $26,992. Each town board member, $7,578. The town clerk, $48,722. Each town justice, $15,583. <coughs> the highway superintendent, 57222 Number six, the mileage reimbursement rate of the town board would establish the mileage reimbursement rate of 0.565 cents per mile for those town officials and employees who incur official mileage when they are obligated to drive their own vehicles on town business <coughs> or when a town vehicle is not available. Bill, could I just interrupt? It's 56.5 cents. 0.565 cents. Dollars. Cetera. Oh, dollars. Okay. If 50, in other words, 56 and a half cents. Okay. Just to be clear. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, zero point five six five percent per dollar. And um, for the year, the payments would be made only after submission, review, and approval of the appropriate voucher by the town supervisor. Number seven, the undertaking of the town board of the town of Red Oak to hereby authorize the execution of a blanket bond in lieu of individual undertaking pursuant to the public officer's law for the purpose of covering all officers and employees who collect money, including supervisor, the town clerk, the business manager, the justices, the justice court clerks, the superintendent of highways, and the receiver of taxes. And lastly, number eight, check signing. The town board of uh, the town of Reddick would hereby authorize the following to sign checks, bank checks, for all town business. One, the supervisor, Sue Crane. Two, in her absence, Deputy Supervisor James Ross. And three, in the absence of the supervisor and the deputy supervisor, any of the board members, Harry Colgan, Bill O'Neill, uh, or Brenda Cable, or James Ross, but he's the deputy supervisor. Right. Could you okay. Okay. Those are the uh, resolutions, and I would ask for a motion to. Uh, Resolve that, and we'll do this by roll call. Is is there a is there a motion to so moved. present? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, just to clarify that the observer is not a weekly. Is that that's why it cannot be one of the official news? Oh, good. Right? Thank you, Brenda. Yep. <clears throat> it's not a weekly. Is there? It is that that is the reason. Yeah. Well, the only. There's no reason. I mean, these are the same ones you've had before. So you all can talk about changing any of the information mm -hmm. in this. But I would say that a newspaper needs to be a weekly newspaper in order to be an official newspaper mm -hmm. under the current definition of the. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, and that's bi monthly, is it now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further comments? Um, so by roll call, all in favor? Brenda? Aye. Harry? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I. Thank you all very much. Okay. If we can turn them to the 2013 appointments, we are down now to um, safety officer. Do you need a copy, Harry? January 3. I thought I had it right here. Yeah. January 3. I don't yes. have mine either, unfortunately. Yeah, well, you can totally share your copy. Or Bill? Sure, Bill. Okay. It's on the kitchen table. Well, this is, I think it's quite the same one as the last one, which is 27. Yeah, no. Well, maybe minor changes, but we'll address them as we go well, along. So, uh, and Brenda, there were some corrections in this one that I handed out. So. Right. Brenda, would you start with safety officer, and, and we'll just run through these down to maybe assistant town historian. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Um, the safety officer <coughs> is the highway superintendent. Is <clears throat> This is what you want me to do? Sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the disaster preparedness and civil defense um, emergency. Is that all with the next that's, thing? That's all together, that's right? Is that all with that? Yeah. Everybody. Yes. Okay. So the disaster preparedness and civil defense emergency interim successors are in order. Uh, the supervisor, <coughs> Sue Crane, Teresa Burke, Jim Ross, and Harry Cogan. Mm -hmm. Receiver of taxes, Sue McCann. Registrar mm -hmm. of vital statistics, Sue McCann. Water Rents Collector, Sue McCann. Issuing Agent Handicapped Parking Permits, Sue McCann. Assessor for a six-year appointment is Scott Hobson, and his appointment was January 31st of 11. Is that right? Okay, I was gonna say you don't really have to read the okay. numbers, but. Building Inspector Two, Stephen Cole. Zoning Enforcement Officer, Building Inspector Part-Time, Robert Fennell. Director of Purchasing, Ted Kudzie, Animal Control Officer, Stephanie Fitzpatrick, 
Panda, representative from town, <clears throat> Mary Ann Harvey. Uh, we have no Panda alternate at this time. Uh, buildings and ground, grounds, it's the supervisor and the highway superintendent. Justice court clerks part-time are Nancy Roberts and Catherine Fell, attorneys who is working for the highway department, but might be willing to serve as this building's, um, um, for want of a better term, maintenance officer. And so Ted has compiled a list of, of responsibilities, and we will be working with Teresa in the, in the week ahead, actually very soon, to uh, come up with a way that we can maybe get some relief here in this building by someone who knows what they're doing rather than having to contract out as things go wrong. And we do have some very real talent at the highway garage and um, among, the, among the employees there. So Teresa and I and Ted will, and uh, Debbie will be talking about this and we'll, more, more to come on that. But I did want to add that. Um, town clerk appointments. Uh, Harry, do you want to start with, uh, let's see, where are we? Justice court clerks? I don't think we did yours either, Sue. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we stopped at town engineer. Town engineer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Town engineer. Supervisor's appointments. Sorry, I, I can do that. Supervisor's appointments. Deputy Supervisor James Ross. Budget Officer Rose Ryder. Confidential Secretary to the Supervisor and Board Linda Stoddard. Town Historian. Winthrop Aldrich, assistant to the town historian, Patsy Vogel. Um, Harry, could you start at town clerk's appointments? Sure. And deputy, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> deputy town clerk, Claire Horst. Deputy register of vital statistics, Claire Horst. Deputy receiver of taxes, Claire Horst. Um, highway superintendent appointments. Deputy superintendent of highways is Rick. Richard Schlomer, uh, other town employees, officers, highway secretary for time is Jeanette Walker, Walter, uh, assistant budget officer is Deborah Marks. Coon. It should be Coon. That's right. Deborah. That's my error. Deborah Coon, yes. Right? Deborah Coon, we're going to <laughs> need to correct that, that twice in there. Well, we correct, that's corrected several times a day as we walk around. Yes, the it is. <laughs> um, business manager, human resources is Deborah Coon. Um, bookkeeper, uh, good bookkeeping work part time is Catherine Fell. And uh, may I interrupt now yeah. because I want to get approval from the board yeah. to change the assessor's clerk part time to deputy assessor. I looked at the county's job description mm -hmm. and our job description, and with all of the work she's done for the last three months, um, going out and and um, doing some of the actual. Um, data collection and so on. The job description of deputy assessor is totally appropriate for her and I would like to change her job title from assessor clerk to deputy assessor. And so I would move to do that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Shall I continue? And then? you, yes please. Okay. Deputy assessor Diana Ficciano, uh, transfer station operator TJ Hackett, Solid Waste Attendants, Kevin Wiley and William Segethy. Segethy. Uh, maintenance of uh, Groundskeeper is Tom Peters, Don Whipple, and Howie Callis. Recreation Park and Program Director, uh, John Kuhn. Uh, Water District Meter Readers, part time, are Cynthia, Cynthia Files, John Wittenberg, and Chris Gifford. Uh, contracts Consultants are Town Physician of St. Francis North and Duchess Hospital, Attorney Keenan Bean, Water District Operator of VRI Environmental Services, Computer Software is Software Consulting Associates, the Planner is Green Plan Inc., Town Accountant is Ray Achilles, uh, Custodial Services is Public Cleaning Services, Police and Court Attendants. The Village of Red Hook Police Department, Dutchess County, uh, Sheriff's Deputies. Um, appointments are annual unless other, uh, otherwise noted. And I would like to add, too, if we might, 
uh, maybe sue after town accountant between town accountant and custodial services mm -hmm. if we could make note that the town um, CPA that we have used for special um, is um, uh, Lori Doty. Lori Doty. All I could think of was Margaret. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Lori was, Lori was great and came in and helped, and she was she was wonderful. So. So then the we'll, town CPA we'll would be Lori. Lori Doty. Doty. Right. And so maybe we can appointments are annual. Um, just before we go further, June 8th yeah. of 2010, town board voted unanimously that any and all town committee appointees must be residents of the town of Red Hook. And I just, we, I would like to just have us take as a whole this and, and move to uh, appoint these, these uh, positions. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, Bill, if you could start with meetings. Um, I think we've done some of these, and you did it, so maybe you'll remember. So we won't we have to repeat them. Meetings. Yeah, we did most of these, didn't we? Foreman heads and committee chairs minutes to reports monthly by noon on the Friday before the second board meeting of the month. Mm -hmm. uh, the annual committee and departmental report shall be submitted by noon on the Friday before the second board meeting, um, starting in February. The CAC is required to present an annual report by April 1st, and the Rec uh, Commission is required to present an annual report also by April 1st. The town board organizational responsibility is as follows. Supervisor, Deputy Supervisor, the town board members in alphabetical order, Brenda Cagle, Harry Colgan, William O'Neill, and James Ross. The mileage is uh, $0.55 per mile. We just changed that. We just changed that. 0. 0.565. 0. 0. 0.565. And that's just because that's the new IRS. I think we're using just, I think we're just using 56. Well, we just changed it. We just, oh, you think uh, you, you want to stay with it? We did that a few minutes ago. Yeah, I know we did. Yeah, I just is. thought it was okay, kind of silly, a half a cent, yeah. half of a half a cent. It's easier if you're all the same role right. okay. for everyone, I think. Okay. Now, the chain of command for town departments, <coughs> the department head, the deputy department head, if one exists, supervisor, and then the town board liaison. Liaisons to the town departments. Um, I'll give the uh, the department first the function and then the liaison. Assessor Sue Crane, Attorney Sue Crane, Bard College Sue Crane, Bookkeeper Sue Crane. Building Inspector James Ross and Bill O'Neill. The Dog Control Brenda Cagle. Fire Companies James Ross and Bill O'Neill. The Highway Department Sue Crane and Harry Colgan. Purchasing Harry Colgan, Recycling Brenda Cagle, Red Hook Central School District Brenda Cagle and Bill O'Neill, The Special Projects Intermunicipal Task Force Harry Colgan and Bill O'Neill, The Town Clerk James Ross and Sue Crane, Village of Red Hook James Ross and Bill O'Neill, and the Village of Tivoli Harry Colgan and Brenda Cagle. I the think board and committee liaisons. Excuse me, can I just interrupt? Mm -hmm. I think we should correct dog control to say animal control just mm -hmm. on that page. Mm -hmm. That's what the county has. Yes, suggested. animal control officer, animal right. Okay. okay. Yes. <coughs> we'll say animal so control. I'm thinking. <coughs> also, uh, Bill, I was thinking maybe you and I ought to change on the villages since I live in the village of Red Hook. And okay. Does that matter? No, it's okay. So That's a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Then the board and committee liaisons, <clears throat> Ag and Open Space Board, um, which also includes the PDR coordination and the limited term conservation easement review, is uh, Bill O'Neill. The Board of Assessment and Review, Sue Crane. Conservation Advisory Council, Brenda Cagle and Bill O'Neill. The Design Review and Hamlet uh, Committee, Harry Colgan. Disaster Preparedness, Sue Crane. 
Economic Development, Harry Colgan. The Board of Ethics, Harry Colgan. I would like to serve on that as well. The Planning Board, Brenda Cagle and Jim Ross. The Rec Commission, uh, Harry Colgan and Bill O'Neill. Senior Services Committee, Brenda Cagle and Sue Crane. Greenway and Trails Committee, Brenda Cagle. Excuse me, so you had said today you wanted to be yeah, I, that? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't believe I need to be on the Senior Services Committee. Brenda has taken it over and taken it over beautifully. Do you need a backup, Brenda? Um, no, but I'd be happy to have you there. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> the Tree Preservation Commission, Brenda Cagle. Water District Number One Advisory Board, Jim Ross. The Zoning Board of Appeals, Jim Ross and Bill O'Neill. The IT Committee, Sue Crane. St. Margaret's Committee, Harry Colgan. That one it will be changed. Jim Ross has agreed to serve <coughs> as liaison to St. Margaret's Committee if they will change their meeting date time so that he can be there. So we're going to try that. We'll see if we can uh, work that out. We do have. We do have the issue of the renovation work going mm -hmm. on there. That mm -hmm. We haven't really identified that as a separate committee. No. And we've been. No, there's no reason to do that. Well, no, except that. Um, Did you want to stay on? Is that what you're thinking? Well, I've, I've been up to my ears in the in the renovation of the building. Do you want to stay on? And then? I, 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 I'm not sure that should be part of. The, it has not been part of the committee activities. They've been assigned fund as a, uh, a, a fundraising. Uh, entity, uh, you know, in support of the future of the of the uh, development there, but in terms of the day-to-day -day management of the building, um, I have worked on it mostly with John Kuhn and, and, uh, and Doug Strowinski. Do you want to call that St. Margaret's Buildings and Grounds? Maybe it would be wise to create a separate committee just as that. How does the board feel about that? Um, I'm sorry. But it isn't really. No, I know it's not. No. Um, before you go on, I just noticed when you were reading the Ag and Open Space Advisory Board, there's a note there that talks about PDR coordination and limited term conservation easement review. I don't think that conservation easement review was ever part of that group's task, and I think that we, in reorganizing the CPF and PDR Advisory Committee, we <coughs> talked to the Ag and Open Space Advisory Board about role in PDR, and they really didn't want a coordination role. They were, you know, I think maybe happy to be, you know, informally advisory to people who were applying, but um, I don't think this is really a correct note for that board's um, task, mm -hmm. as I understand it. So, Right. I, I think I want to take that <clears throat> parenthetical out. Okay. Okay. So we are at Zoning Review Committee, the Bill? Zoning Review Committee is Bill O'Neill. The CPF PDR Advisory Committee is Harry Colgan and Sue Crane. Sister Cities Working Group, Sue Crane. And that gets us to the uh, committee appointments. So maybe I would like then to ask for our approval as we have discussed these uh, various uh, appointments. Um, is there a motion? So no. moved. Second. Further discussion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Harry, do you want to start on the next page, page four, Town Board Committee appointments? Should be 2013, right? Yeah, it should say 2013. The top of page four. Committee members mm -hmm. are expected to attend two thirds or more of scheduled meetings. That's understood. <laughs> Failure okay. to do so may result in removal from the committee. I get to say all the bad stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, starting with Ag and Open Space. Whatever floats your boat, <laughs> as they say in the old school. Um, Ag and Open Space Advisory uh, uh, Committee is nine members. Uh, Co-chairs are Norman, Greg, and Peter Hubble. Uh, now, they would be, how do we want to do that? Because their, their appointment was through 2012. 
So they need That's to an annual appointment for yeah. chair. For chair. Yes. Right. And we haven't had that discussion with them, have we? Have no. you, Bill? No. Then I would, yeah, I would suggest that we hold the chair appointments until we've all had as liaisons chance to confirm mm -hmm. with the with the persons that they are willing to continue to serve. Also, I don't know which ones. I mean, I'm assuming everybody would want to stay on there, but. Right, we have I sent. I, right, we have sent a memo to all of the chairs, and only heard back from the ZBA. Years. I think um, as yeah. to the composition of the committee and that mm -hmm. people do want to stay on. Mm -hmm. So we may need to um, just run through these and see where there are vacancies tonight, and confirm the actual committees at the next meeting on the uh, fourth fourth Wednesday. So on this page, uh, the Ag and Open Advisory, are there any vacancies? I see none, right? Is that right? Uh, he, so. he told me that stages is not to be honest. Yeah, I, I've heard that. Okay, it so that, a room, a category, that's, a, though. that's a possible <laughs> vacancy. We'll, I'll pencil that in and we'll yeah. find out about that. Okay. Any others that you know? He doesn't want to be chairman anymore. Pete does not. Okay. Okay. And Norman hasn't come to meetings, so I mean, he handed in a resignation, and we don't know if he's on or off. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I'll do is um, maybe I'll give Pete and Norman a call and and find out their intentions before the next meeting. Okay. I think that's the best we can do with that committee right now. I see that Jim Stage, Marianne Johnson also is would be reappointed if she's willing to stay on, and Michael Robertson. So we'll need to um, query those people yeah. and find out their intentions. Okay, the assessment review board I believe is set. We took um, care of that in September. Dominic has resigned. Oh, is there is there a vacancy? I did not know. Dominic Scarpula resigned. Okay. Hmm. All right. When did he do that? Hmm. I I he sent a letter. Oh, or someone told me, did, was the assessor told me we should check that? Oh. I thought there was a letter. I didn't see it. I don't do a letter. Yeah, I didn't it receive it, I he, don't think. I saw something, and <coughs> then he had moved out of town. And, mm -hmm. Oh. Well, maybe, sir, could you give a call and well, find out so if this is the mm -hmm. assessment um, review board of review? Assessment review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could you try to... Unless it was No, Carl, oh, you mean had yeah. reported it? Maybe. I don't remember. I had not heard I that. I don't see it among my I, correspondence. I think we should check. Okay. I'll, I'll get to you. Okay, that's great. So we'll just... That's a question. All right, where are we? Okay, that puts us to the CPF. Okay, CPF. CPF looks like a full committee if mm -hmm. all are willing to serve. Yeah. We'll try to get the answer to that by the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Conservation okay. Advisory Committee Council, Brenda, do you know about their intentions? Is everyone I, I, <clears throat> staying on? I think they have, but I, there may be one question. Okay. All right. Could you check on that and yes. report back to the next mm -hmm. meeting then? Okay, Brenda, I think your design review, you yeah, Hamlet? I think that's Harry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Harry. Harry, um, this is a committee by your code with five to nine members with two We need to get members there. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And Chris that I'm sure Redick, of. Three residents are to be from within the Hamlet district. Um, and the remaining two members are supposed to represent specialized disciplines, or disciplines with specialized expertise, such as archaeologist, architect, landscape, architect, or builder. Mm -hmm. That's what your code says. Um, Could I have a copy of that when you, since you have it in your hand before I leave? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's just straight out of your uh, uh, code, but I'll, I'll yeah, okay. yeah. Take me a half hour to find it. Yeah. One more. <laughs> just to remind you. Mm -hmm. well, now, in terms of disaster preparedness, um, I believe all of the members remain the same, except for 
uh, the police department representative, who is Patrick Hildenbrand. Otherwise, I think I think they are all remaining the same. I'll check on the Red Hook Fire Company. Um, I'm not certain about that. I'm fairly certain about the Tivoli Fire Company rep, but I will check on that Red Hook Fire Company and confirm next time. Okay. Economic Development Committee. Who's liaison? Harry, are you? Uh, yeah. And, uh, um, there are no... There's a meeting this Thursday I'll review it with him then. Good. Um, and this looks this looks uh, mm -hmm. complete to me as a... Mm -hmm. So if you just check with those yeah. whose term expired in 2012 to confirm that they would be willing to serve for yeah. an additional two years? Mm -hmm. Okay. And ethics board, I can certainly check with Father Cartier mm -hmm. and... Gail Nussbaum, who mm -hmm. would be expiring this year. Otherwise, I think, oh, and we have a secretary vacancy there. Yeah, that's correct, yes. Okay. We'll see what we can do about that. Greenway and Trails, is that you, Brenda? It is, and <clears throat> I haven't heard anything. Okay. Then I'll check. Okay. Um, it, I think Roseanne Fritz, was she... Filling an unexpired term, is that why she's up? Uh, yes. 2012? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so if you could confirm with all those members that they are willing to re-up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. And the IT committee, I believe, is complete and willing to continue. <coughs> um, Bill, intermunicipals shared, oh, I guess that's Harry, sorry. Sure. Sure. That's kind of a, a committee that we really all need to pay attention to this yeah. year. And you, you're part of that. Yeah, yeah. We, we're we're going to really we have, to. have to. We need to make that move. Yeah. Uh, is, is six members the limit to the number of members we can have on that committee, Chris? What? Is that by statute? Task force that you guys yeah. yeah. So, your discretion. so yeah. we can do, yeah. I think we said two members from each municipality, mm -hmm. but I think we could do better than that and maybe... Um, we'll turn our attention to that in the week ahead. Bill, I'm sorry, Intermunicipal Task Force. Well, yeah, we're, we've got David Pearson. I don't know if he's still interested in coming back. But and, uh, and, uh, and Tim, what's Tim's last name? The fellow who showed up from Tivoli, who, the fellow who is uh, an engineer, lives in his neighbor, lives in Tivoli. Oh. Tim. Came to a meeting in, uh, about two weeks ago and miss some because of the holiday. And he's someone we should consider. Mm -hmm. He has great credentials. Tim from Tivoli. Yeah. And all of a sudden again, he's in, he's in Rotary now. Too. <laughs> Good. He's on the plane. Um, do we um, have Tim Lynch? Hmm? Tim Lynch. Lynch, okay. Lynch. Yes. Who's, who's David Pearson? Mm. He's from the Village Planning Board. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. are Red Hope. Red Hope, yes. Red Hope, mm -hmm. yes. That would be great so if we had two, those two. Yeah, that would be great. So the next time you meet, you'll confirm with yes. Brent and Charlie Lang. And yep. Okay. And Charlie Lang has been a regular participant. And Susan has been coming also, yes, she right? Has. Okay, good. Okay. Planning board. Bill, I'll let you carry that one. Well, or is it you, yours? It's Brenda's. I'm sorry, it's Brenda's. You and Jim Ross. I will. Okay. Just, yes. Okay. And Chris's Thank you. recent resignation. So. Yes, right. So we, we have, have a vacancy. One, we yeah. have one alternate. Um, oh, I thought we had one in the wings. No. Isn't there a Turk in there? Yeah, the Michelle room? was an alternate. Right, and she moved up as a member. She when, Patrick left. when Patrick left, Patrick oh, okay. left. Yes. Right. so we have no alternates. Okay, and, and a vacancy. A, can we have an opening now then? Yes. So we have a vacancy and two alternate the Chris, vacancies. Chris, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's important that we. Um, yeah. You have seven members, right? Uh, we have one. Mm -hmm. two, oh, we do have three. seven members. Michelle you know, I don't six, think Michelle seven. moved up, did she? That was Betty Carr that moved up. That's what I thought. I don't think Michelle moved up. Mm -hmm. Could that be? 
<clears throat> I think the last the, uh, the last board meeting she was indicated as an alternative. Alternative. She's That's alternative. what I thought. Yeah. I thought she was. Okay. I'll okay. Check that. Well, what's the head count here? Yeah, okay. And in which case we have Michelle Turk <coughs> at this moment as a vacant as as an alternate. Yeah. Yes, and so. uh, there is a vacancy, so Correct. we'll have to make That's a decision. Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And that was the Chris Munn slot. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, unless somebody else is on here, it shouldn't be good. No, it's right. Okay. So, will you have a conversation with Michelle? Sure. Okay. Thank you. So then you'd be looking for an alternate. Well, two. I mean, we we've had two we in had the past. Two. Yeah, yeah. It's that that's worked out well when these sudden vacancies occur, especially in so planning and ZBA. It's really important yeah. boards. Or oh yeah, so would she just be? So she would fill out Chris's term, mm -hmm. which ends this year anyway. Is that how it works? It would end at uh, uh, the end of two thousand. Isn't it the end of two thousand thirteen? Yeah. That would be Chris's term. Chris would be mm -hmm. the through the through okay. 2013. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it looks like Chris Kane's term is up this year, so. So that um, would be two. That would be the one that would mm -hmm. be reappointed, and then she, uh, I guess Michelle, if she was going to be appointed to Chris's position, would fill the other side. Mm -hmm. So that would make her 2013. Correct. So you'll yeah. confirm with Christine Kane her interest in remaining as chair mm -hmm. and and re-upping for. Another appointment? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we don't have any alternates. Right. So we need to well, publicize that. It would be helpful for everyone. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll publicize it and coax the audience if there's any remaining tonight to express interest to the town clerk if they are interested in the planning board because that those are really important uh, mm -hmm. um, volunteers. Okay, Rec Commission, Harry or Bill, one of you. And I think what you have, we have here is, is correct. They meet next, uh, I believe it's next Monday. Okay. And, and review it then. Good. But they, they're, they're all regular attendees. Okay. And St. Margaret's Committee, I believe we need reappointments of most everybody. There is a vacancy. Through the resignation of Patrick Hildenbrand, um, Ralph Fredenza, Fresenda is the only. Um, no, Rosemary and Ralph are the two that are through this year. The others need to be reappointed. So we'll get. Uh, I'm sorry, you did. You did. Here, I don't think. Well, she's not on the list. She, you're she not on this list. Sorry. Yeah. There is a vacancy, and there are two vacancies actually. Three vacancies. Patrick and Linda and another. Okay, so that that committee is going to need some work. Okay, senior services, Brenda, you'll mm -hmm, check, check with everybody there. Sheila came in today, hale and hearty, and mm -hmm. is... Uh, Looking forward to joining that committee again next month. She's she feels she feels very good. And she looks wonderful. Um, oh, and we have an interested person. Oh, good. Okay. So um, the Sister Cities Working Group is is kind of an ad, ad hoc committee. Is I think of it anyway. And there has been some interest expressed in expanding the committee. It's not has it hasn't any constitutional numbers associated with it, does it? Did we ever pass anything that said it sister cities had to be a certain number? Uh, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, just a board committee. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'll be meeting with them next week, and we'll talk about additional members who are interested. Mm -hmm. Uh, tree Preservation Committee. I believe that committee stands as is, and the and the members are interested in being re-upped for two-year appointments, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't heard otherwise. <laughs> Linda's given us the thumbs up. <clears throat> right. 
And the water board, I believe, remains the same. I spoke with Hank about that, and I think everybody remains interested and committed. So we would be reappointing Richard, F Richard Franklin for two more years, Nick Annis for two more years, Hank for two more years, and Hank as chair again. <coughs> and I, could, I would make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the only one you really voted on was the water district. The water talk. district, and I think we can safely vote on the tree preservation committee because I believe that's, don't you, Brenda? I, I think that's solid. You think? I think they want to stay. I think they do. Rose do you want to check on it? Cataret. No. Would you like okay. to check? You like to check before we vote? If Linda, I haven't been able to make the last couple of meetings, but if they've discussed it. We didn't really have an open discussion, but nobody said that they, they didn't want, want to. to get off. Everybody's okay, let's go ahead with that. I'm all right. Let's go. That's the motion? Sure. I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Bill, have you attended any of these meetings? And do you know the inclination of the members? Well, no, but we got Nick Addis's. Uh, Letter, you know, where right here. Yeah. everybody wants to stay on. Yes. Um, there is, of course, you know, uh, the subject we keep putting off about whether it's seven or five. Mm -hmm. So I think all the board members should, you know, come up with a position on that subject. Um, it, again, it's a little mm -hmm. awkward with our town laws, right? Not in the other <laughs> You know, some some references to seven members and others to five. So we, we did we do have to reconcile that somewhat. But we I think we had talked over the past year or two of doing it just by, you know, the matter of attrition as people uh, mm -hmm. leave the committee. Uh, but, but my understanding is that the the chairman still would prefer five. Well, if you do decide to go in that direction, though, I think you need to, you know, modify your. No local law. law. We have to. Really, we should in any case. Position because otherwise we still have when we need to make a vote and we need that. You know that's the full number of the committee and we. You know we're going to end up with situations where you don't have enough people to vote. So. The local law we have today mixes up the number five and seven, um, and it it certainly wouldn't pass muster. <laughs> Well, You've seen that reference, right, where we say so that We discussed our, that at the beginning of last year. And yeah. I think that you just wanted to reconcile it. Yeah. Well, so it doesn't all, hurt anybody. It should, be, it should be correct. You all and can. if it's still consistent with what uh, Nick Annis recommends, you know, then we, we might be wise to do it. Okay, well, you all can, if you let me know what I'm you I'm not willing to do it without the full board. board. I think we need yeah. to all discuss not, it. That, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that's a, correct. Okay, so we'll wait until Jim is back on board uh, to discuss that next time. Uh, zoning Review Committee, Bill, I think you're that as well. I yeah, I mean they, you know, again they didn't meet toward the end of the year. There wasn't any uh, agenda for them, but I haven't yet spoken to Susan. To see what their position is. Mm -hmm. Or her position, we haven't heard from her, right? I have not. Have not Actually, there was an email sent when we started saying that she would like to be on the board. But does any does anybody say they want to get off? Uh, the emails I saw, uh, I did not see anybody who wanted to get off. But well, she wanted to join the board, right? So no, she wants to stay on. So she signed as the secretary. As the secretary, Linda Stoddard. Oh, Linda Stoddard's the secretary for the board, yes. Yes, that's the, she, she is and is still willing as best I can. Okay. So that's it for tonight. I think that's all we can do tonight. I think that zoning review committee remains the same. I haven't heard anyone who's burning to get off. I will confirm that. Okay. Um. So do we have a policy about being on um, more than one board or something like that? Have we discussed that before? We've discussed it. I don't know that we ever established a policy. We d we've, we've tried not to duplicate appointments just from a practical matter of burning someone out. 
frankly, I think that's. I think that's the conversation I, we had. I think that's as yeah. close as it comes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the question is because. Is there someone? No, I'm, I'm just curious because it, you know, once in a while it comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have. There is correspondence here somewhere, and I'm not sure if <coughs> I have it or one of you has it. I did have it. Okay. <laughs> I think it may be in the other room. I don't think I brought it with me, and it it isn't crucial. It was simply. Um, Here it is, if you want it. Ah, thank you. I think I referred to this before, but it, but it bears saying again that we really need all of us uh, on the board and anyone out there who has um, interest in shared services, has ideas about shared services, has um, experienced or witnessed shared services that have worked in other communities. We need all the help we can get on this because we really are going to be very seriously putting together an application for this um, Dutchess County Shared Services Grant Program, which has a total of $2 million available in 2013, and the application is coming up this month. So um, I'm hoping that I can contact one or more of you and ask you to work with me on that on that application and invite all of the public to have input in that regard because it's an important um, it's an important uh, agenda item for us in the year ahead at least me personally and I think the whole board is with me on this okay and then we'll do will be some uh, presentation from the Northern Dutchess Alliance on this from uh, thank you very much the professionals over at Newport to put it together Yes, and, so, and are you interested in setting a date for that now, well, we, or do you we, want to talk well, about we that? Well, mm -hmm. we have a preliminary presentation to the, uh, and they were looking for a site, and I, I volunteered our site here, uh, which would be in the, in the morning of the 21st, um, okay. with uh, Jerry Benjamin from uh, New Poles. So and that's just preliminary to the invitation you have. What the, day the, is, the, what the day is that? I think it's twenty first. Uh, hmm? January twenty yes. first. Monday. That's Monday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it would be here in town hall. It's actually here. Martin Luther King Day, and we're yeah. Oh, closed. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So well, let's. So we would, we had no choice but to okay. set that that day anyway. So you're going to have it anyway. Well, but, but, but it'll be somewhere, and I couldn't get a commitment from them as to whether it would, I, I just offered our town hall. Okay. And I'll open the building for them. Now, wait a minute. That's, what did, the 21st, okay. 21st. And you think maybe 10 o'clock? Probably, uh, may I, uh, our meetings normally are at 8.30. That's an ungodly hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I just, while well, you're doing where you are, yes. um, just to remind you that the annual accounting is for justices and the Tax collector and the clerk needs to be done by June, I think it's the 20th. Of January? January. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I know I know that Lori made that observation and said let's get at it right away I just want to make sure when we turn the calendar. So thank you for reminding us. You'll contact her in that regard? Uh, right. Lori, yeah. Lori, to do the... Do you well, she, no, um, Debbie does that. Debbie does it? Okay. Yes. Okay, I'll remind Deb to get on that. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Anyone? Thank you all for your help with that. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, of agenda. Of agenda. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. I should have known that you haven't been waiting here patiently just to watch us adjourn. John, you must have public comment. Yes, I do. Please step up to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your coming and. <laughs> giving us your insights. I know it isn't, and I'm happy that you did. Um, something, something, something dear to my heart is solar power. I've discussed this with the town board before, past years, and it's still not done. Rack car. We have roofs over at the rack car that we put solar panels on. Uh, work with Dicer like you did here. Get them on the buildings over there. Help the town decrease our costs long term 
We need to decrease our cost long term. And we have the roof, roofs over there, and uh, we could, we could, uh, they could be installed. We did a beautiful job here in the town hall. You expanded the ones in the town hall. I think it would be most appropriate. We have an agenda. Well, the roofs, yeah, the yeah, next one is to do our back here. And well, no, you got the, uh, you have the, um, uh, the building with the, uh, the, uh, the with the uh, cafeteria where they have the, you know, mm -hmm. you get yeah. snacks and stuff, and then you have the other building where you have your maintenance equipment. We've had conversation with the C ZAC to keep their eyes and ears open for an Isertic grant for the highway garage, which is the size of a football field. Well, but that, and, and the way you yeah. work that is you get a contractor in and he does all the paperwork for you. Yeah, we're, we're, we have, um, you call, we're, in, we're in line. You can call Hudson Solar. They can come up for free and they do all the paperwork for mm -hmm. you. All you have, uh, it's just a little time. Here's the building. They do all the measurements. They do all the uh, That's engineering. That's what we've done before. And then they come back and tell you what the deal is. Um, so you're suggesting the snack bar and the maintenance building yeah, at the rec and, park. And okay. Highway well, Perfect. John, when we wrote the grants for the, the uh, panels on top of the town hall, the big expansion, and for the firehouse, they did look at that area. And I think uh, for some reason it wasn't suitable, but they did check that area. I can check into it. It may have been the shade around the snack bar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's enough spacing or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's enough sun by way the roof. The direction is that right. it faces east. But right we can look so into it. I know a garage that has less uh, uh, footprint than the uh, snack bar and the uh, maintenance shed. And uh, that uh, that's doing wonderful for the owner of the property. Very, he's very, very happy with uh, the results of the uh, solar panels uh, that he has on his. We haven't ever turned any of them down. Next issue, water lines. Uh, yes. Some of those water lines were put in the 1950s. Uh, highly suggested the town board sits down with Hank Van Paris, uh, <coughs> come up with some sort of ad warm tax like they did with the uh, water tank and do a uh, 1,000 linear feet or 2,000 linear feet, come up with some sort of normal, uh, some sort of routine where we do so much a year and we don't borrow, we pay as we go to upgrade our water lines. Um, I read an article recently that the uh, state says that we're uh, in serious trouble with it. It's and bridges and roads, water lines, sewer lines. Uh, so, and our lines are, are 50, some are 50 years old. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, if we did a, come up with a nice plan where we don't borrow, we, 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 get, we pay a little bit more in our water bills, and, and then we replace, you know, a little bit every year, uh, and then that would keep us out of trouble where uh, I remember one year that uh, Town of Hyde Park said, okay, all of a sudden they have to borrow $6 million because we got the uh, road maintenance. Well, our town of Red Oak, we do so much a year in road maintenance to keep, so we don't have to borrow money. We pay as we go. And that's the way we need to operate. And we, we haven't done anything to our water lines in the, in the water district. And so that, that's, uh, I brought this up to Hank numerous different occasions. Still, there's no nothing being done. So it's something that needs to be done. We just can't all of a sudden they fail and then all of a sudden you got to go to the water district and the 460 people say oh we got to come up with eight million dollars or six million or whatever the number is. Have you talked with Jim who's the liaison to bring that to the water board at the next meeting? Well I didn't think I needed to because I talked to Hank Van Paris who's the chairman. Oh okay so I, you I, already have. And right. I, I brought this up on numerous occasions over numerous years and since I was sitting here, it popped in my head again, so I'm bringing it forth again to a different board. Uh, I don't think I ever brought it to the town board. I always brought it to the chairman. Now I'm bringing it to the board. This is something that should be considered and, and thought about. Okay. So we do a little bit, piecemeal, pay as you go. So we're not overburdening the rate payers, but then again, we're not putting them in the position that all of a sudden we got a big major catastrophe. I think in the last year or two years, some sort of ruling from a court or the state 
or something like that stated that any paperwork you guys are looking at, like you were just looking at all the, we need to see. You got to provide it to us in paperwork, or we need to see all that stuff. It's been done. Uh, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. That's, that's and, and I was thinking that, maybe you could just have like a, a display, you know, like a whiteboard where you, you know, that way everybody can, it's like a projector sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Just an idea. Yeah. yeah. As much as paper, possible, Sue McCann has been trying to put things on the website when they're available mm -hmm. and then time. Mm -hmm. For example, she's able to put them on the website like public hearing documents and that sort of thing. She's been trying to do that as much as possible, as reasonably practicable. And other things, you know, a lot of times things are just available shortly before the meeting, but they go into a public examination folder. At least that's what we've been doing so far. Mm -hmm. See, I haven't been to a meeting. I did not yep. realize. <laughs> See, there's your documents, John. <laughs> now, so I had a discussion with Nick about five members, seven, bo uh, seven board members, five board members, and I, I couldn't really get out of Nick on why he felt that we needed only five members on the ZBA. My premise is seven members works. It's worked for a long time. Before I was on the ZBA, we've had seven members. <coughs> we've had different chairmen. It's worked for the different chairman. And if it works, why play around with it? But if you're going to change it, why the ZBA only the ZBA? Then you should have every board be five members only. If you're going to change the ZBA, then all the boards should only be five members. So we would change it only because the law says that the town had changed it to five members, but they had never really formally done that up in all the so State law says it. In our oh, paperwork. It's already been done. State law well, says. Well, maybe you can change it back to seven. No, but you can't. State Why, law. What, read what, what read the state law. Read the state law. State law sets the ZBA at five member board. If you had had. A seven-member board, you can leave it seven members, um, but you can't have you can't revert to a seven-member board if you have a five-member board. And the state recommends and sets it at five members. The planning board is set at seven members. Most of the other boards are at the discretion of the town, but the board is is is, um, is set by state law. So we've had seven, so we keep it as seven. Um, we can accept that the state law, our, our local law, uh, is a uh, uh, fair blonde, as we say in the old school. In one sense, it refers to itself as five members. In the next sense, it refers to itself as seven members. So it, it's uh, illogical and irrational as it is. So I guess it's grandfather, and since we've been seven, we can keep seven. Well, since seven works, I wouldn't change it. I would, I would keep it as seven. And my point is, if you're going to change it, and you got, in my mind, you would have to change it, but uh, to make things fair. Then that's well, that's, we can't. That's my price. State law requires that the planning board be seven. Okay. But you can keep the ZBA at seven. You have the option. Because it's been seven. Mm -hmm. You have the option. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Those are all the items. That's Thank all? You. Mm -hmm. that's Thank you, right? John. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyone else have public comment? Rose, surely you must have something to say. She's You've been so quiet. All of this. <laughs> 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 I think we're Thank you for agreeing to serve again as as budget officer, Rose. I just went right ahead and <laughs> nominated you without any questions. I'm cold. Oh, you're cold. Okay. So, do we have a motion to? Is adjourn? there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Uh, seconded. Yes, I heard you second. <laughs> Thank you. Good night.